One of the nice applications that we have of implicit differentiation is that it can actually help us find the inverse or the derivative of some inverse function. So let's take a look at an inverse function, uh, inverse cosine of x equals y. Sometimes we see this written as arc cosine of x equals y. You're likely to see us use both of these notations um, during class, but you're likely to see this inverse cosine format a little bit more in things like Newton Alta and OpenStax, but both are correct and they're both the same thing. Um, but other books and things, you might see this arc cosine notation a little bit more. So just a reminder of what this means with it being an inverse function, that means this is the same function as cosine of y is equal to x. So what we can do if we want to take the inverse of, or the derivative of inverse cosine is we could actually instead take the derivative of it written in this format, that cosine of y is equal to x, because that's something we can take the derivative of with uh, implicit differentiation. So let's do that. Let's see what happens when we take the derivative of this cosine of y equals, to, equals x. And again, this is the same function as inverse cosine. So the derivative that we're going to get is actually going to be the derivative of the inverse cosine. So we're going to do implicit differentiation, means, means we're going to take the derivative of both sides of our equation here. And then, you know, the Right-hand side's pretty straightforward. The derivative of x is 1, so we get 1 on that side. Our left-hand side's what we have to pay a little bit more attention to. And here we're using the chain rule. And the derivative of a cosine is negative sine. So we take the derivative of the cosine part, leaving our function plugged inside alone. And then we multiply by the derivative of that inside function, which in this case is y, and its derivative is dy dx. And then we want to solve this equation for dy dx. So we're going to divide both sides by that negative sine of y. And we end up with that the derivative is negative 1 over the sine of y. So again, what we found here is that we found that the derivative of this cosine of y equals x is minus 1 over sine of y. Another way to state what we just found is that we took the derivative of the inverse cosine of x and we got negative 1 over sine of y, which is a little bit weird. What we'd like is for our original function here to be written in terms of x, which again, cosine of y equals x is the exact same function as inverse cosine of x is equal to y. And so if our original equation is written in terms of x, we sure would like our derivative to be written in terms of x. So the question is, is sort of, can we get there? We absolutely can. And what we need to do is look at a little more closely, what is cosine of y equals x? Or again, kind of in parentheses, inverse cosine of x being equal to y. What does that mean? Well, what that means is that here we have that that cosine of y, we take cosine of angles. So y is an angle, and x is our trig ratio. That's our output. So for cosine, that's our adjacent side over our hypotenuse, if we were talking about this in terms of a right triangle, which we absolutely can. So our cosine of our angle y is equal to x over 1. So if we draw a triangle to represent this situation here, a little right triangle, there's our right triangle. If we've got our angle y there, our cosine of that angle is equal to our adjacent side divided by our hypotenuse. So remember, here's our adjacent side, and here's our hypotenuse make that actually look like hypotenuse, hypotenuse. And then this side here is our opposite side. And we need to know what that opposite side is because in terms of our derivative, our, our derivative was sine of y. So we actually need to actually figure out what the sine of that angle y is. Well, for sine of y, 
that is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So we need to figure out in this situation, well, what would that opposite side be? Well, that's where we can use the Pythagorean theorem, right? We have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, right? Where c is our hypotenuse, and a and b are two sides of our triangle. Well, one of them is x, the other is our opposite side, and then our hypotenuse in this case is 1. So we can take the Pythagorean theorem and we can solve this for that opposite side. So the opposite side being squared is equal to 1 minus x squared. So the length of the opposite side is the square root of 1 minus x squared. So sine of this angle y is our opposite side, which is 1 minus x squared, or the square root of 1 minus x squared. Sorry about that. We'll write that over there as well so we can see that on our triangle. And that's divided by our hypotenuse, which in this case is 1. So sine of y is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. So back to the derivative that we got. So again, when we took the derivative of that inverse cosine function, you know, written this kind of funny way here, flipped around as cosine of y equals, equals x, we got that it was equal to negative 1 over sine of y. And we just learned right here that sine of y is the square root of 1 minus x squared. And so that's the derivative of our inverse function. So we kind of have to go through a couple of things. We have to go through this implicit differentiation process. Oops, sorry about that. Did mean to, to make that a little crazy. But we need to go through the implicit differentiation process to get this equation, at least in terms of a trig function and in terms of that angle y. And then we need to look at, well, what does it mean for this angle to be y and its cosine to be equal to x. So that's where we went and we looked at our triangle and again figured out what sides that trig ratio gave us. It gave us the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. We could use those to find the third side of our triangle, that square root of 1 minus x squared. And then now that we know all three sides of that triangle, we can get the other trig ratios if we need them. In this case, we just need the sine of y. And that's equal to, sorry, the square root's bothering me. <laughs> we get the square root of 1 minus x squared. Then we can plug that back into our derivative that we got. And we get that the derivative of the inverse cosine function is not actually a trig function at all. It's this rational function, negative 1 over, over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So in class, we are likely to see how we can do this with some other types of functions. So in particular, you know, how do we do this with inverse sine of x is equal to y to get a derivative for that guy? And how can we do something similar with natural log of x is equal to y to get a derivative for natural log? Because we haven't had any derivatives with natural logs just yet. So we're going to take a look at doing implicit differentiation on sine of y is equal to x and e to the y is equal to x.